Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning Good morning viewers, welcome to Seabreeze Rider Channel. As you can see we are in the beautiful or on the beautiful island of Madeira and uh, we're out with Steve on our tour. This is the uh, first day of the tour. Just leaving Funchal and heading apparently to one of the highest points in the island. Uh, we're on the little uh, NT750s, Hondas, uh, which Steve supplies and uh, they've all got little top boxes which is nice so you can put all your, your stuff in the back it's great and uh, yeah weather's good apparently all day so we're gonna have a good one so uh, yeah just sit back and enjoy the ride with us see anything of interest we'll stop and talk about it Yeah, we are talking about two experienced riders of Norway, so switchbacks. Haha, <laughs> we laugh at switchbacks. <laughs> A twisty rows around mountains. We eat them for breakfast. No, true. You just have to watch. So, um, so Anne and I are just discussing about um, our uh, experience on switchbacks and we have done a, you will have seen on our video, previous videos, we were in Norway and uh, that is the land of the switchback because the mountain roads just take you everywhere. And so by a good, I think third or third day into the tour, we were just eating those up like they were nothing. But um, for those people that have never ridden mountainous roads or no switchbacks it's well worth trying and Steve was telling a story about a uh, Dutch rider who was quite experienced but of course she'd never seen a mountain and he took her on this road and uh, at the top of the mountain she was a nervous wreck so we had to change the route uh, bless her yeah Holland is quite flat but um, there are some wonderful sights Okay, the key to a switchback, look where you want to go. Get the right gear, look where you want to go. And if you need a little bit of back brake. But if you don't need it, just look where you want to go. While we were on the plane yesterday, I was reading uh, Ride magazine and there was an article about someone who was having trouble doing U-turns on their Triumph Tiger and uh, the Ride magazine editor on safety was giving hints and tips about doing a U-turn and one of the things he said is look where you want to go. Well there you go. That is the biggest tip about doing a U-turn, where you want to go. There are other things, of course, that you can add to that. I always think with U-turns, um, make sure you don't pull the clutch in. That's the biggest problem, because when you're doing, a, especially in the UK, you're doing a left or right U-turn, the furthest point on your handlebars is over the left-hand side. People tend to pull their clutch in, and you've got to fight the urge, and let the bike run. And if you add the turn and the, uh, the vision with it and as my wife just pointed out once you're on the straight a little bit more power and come out of the turn quite nicely add all those things and practice 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 that's the only thing that you get better at the more you do of these the easier they become
So we're just coming down from the uh, top of the uh, island, on a long road heading back towards Funchal, but we're uh, heading out towards the coast apparently. And uh, as you can see, coming down through the tree lines, completely different from the top of the mountains, which is all pampas grass and rocky outcrops and firs. But uh, yeah. Quite a spectacular road coming down. It was a little bit steep and a little bit daunting, but uh, we got down. Down in one piece, yeah. So this is um, Nuns Valley, which apparently is because um, back in the day when French pirates came into Madeira, the nuns, three day walk, and they settle, settled in the valley uh, because they knew that the pirates wouldn't follow them into the valley and they'd be safe. So that's why it's, it's called Nuns Valley. Quite spectacular, really. Now well, we're going even higher. So we've been informed. And apparently that road there was the old road <laughs> and it is still marked but goes through but it's uh, used to go round the outside quite scary when you think about it so as far as temperatures concerned so we are in uh, late October and uh, we were debating about what to take as far as clothing so we've both got jackets which are not winter jackets but maybe medium jackets um, uh, I'm in a t-shirt underneath this and we're both wearing jeans and uh, you know comfortable boots not heavy boots and it seems to be okay temperature wise and Steve has just suggested that um, as far as riding this particular road second gear pretty much just using a second gear engine braking a little bit braking before the bends 
and again just looking where you're going so uh, for those that haven't done switchbacks before as I mentioned before it's all about gearing position and looking where you want to go Wow what a what a ride <laughs> Oh no! What oh, incredible! The thing is, it's like everything else. You know, you, you want to try and describe something, but it's never going to come across on the footage. When I'm looking at something, you know, I've got oh, I've got pampas grass on the left. Uh, I think they call it pampas grass, don't they? And then we've got ferns, because they're definitely fern trees. Definitely fir trees. A pampas grass fir tree. Uh, yeah, lichens. But but actually, that's changed since we've risen. Uh, you know, in height, isn't it? Uh, and then it doesn't. You know, when we were down. Uh, at the bottom it was more floral and I suppose yeah very pretty and the other thing is well surprisingly you know when they say oh it's not a very big island oh, we're going to stop somewhere along here you're not actually seeing a huge amount of people right so park uphill obviously that's wise well so we're stopping here, so that's all right. All right. Yeah, good. That's, that's great, isn't it? Spectacular, isn't it? So do you reckon here, it, here to put the drone up would be yeah, good? Yeah, I mean, if you have a shot of that road... It, it goes all the way down, doesn't it? Yeah, we're only halfway. Yeah, oh wow. I'll definitely do that then.
So after the sights at the top of uh, the mountain, at the radar station, we came down to Porto de Cruz, where we had lunch here at the Pacinas snack bar. As you can see, the waves came crashing in, disturbing someone's lunch at the front. But um, it was a, a wonderful lunch and the scenery was spectacular. After that, we popped around the corner to a rum distillery. We didn't partake in any rum for obvious reasons, but we did buy a bottle for later. And then back on the bikes, heading up to a viewpoint above Porto de Cruz, which you'll see later in the video. Get those revs up. What's that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, most definitely get those revs up. Well, that was a lovely lunch, wasn't it? And, and, a, and a visit to a rum distillery as well. <laughs> and, uh, and some... So Anne's managed to buy herself a little bit of birthday cake for tomorrow and a bit of rum, so we're good there. And as we're not riding, that's what we're doing. Celebrating her birthday with a bit of rum and Madeira cake. Can't get better than that. And uh, yeah, you can probably see from the video as well. I did take some footage of of the uh, the sea coming into where we were having lunch. So it was quite uh, spectacular. So really, we were. Uh, oh, what's the time now? Uh, three twenty. Is it half three? So we are working our way back uh, to Funchal. So it's been a full-on day. We've got no complaints, and it's been really nice, good, good company. So, uh, and we've only done really a very small uh, bit of the island so far. So uh, when you think about four days, it must be all right. It's uh, there's plenty to do. It is a bit of paradise though, I must admit, um, and it's really weird because never, we never thought about coming here before, but I'm um, glad we have done. Yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely if you're uh, into motorcycling. A little bit rocky. So we were just talking about, um, Steve was thinking about other motorcycles that would be good for this and the conversation we were having was really ab about um, something that's durable, something that's not too big as in powerful, because you don't need a big bike for this because um, you are literally only in third gear most of the time poodling around quite nice, but equally you want something that you're not you know, at the top end of its power range. So you want something that's a bit mid, mid, mid talking. And uh, and the Triumph Scrambler 400 came up, or the new Himalayan Royal Enfield, which has got, I think, a 47 brake horsepower engine in it. So those two might be good options for the future. So he's thinking about both of those. But uh, yeah all good options there's plenty out there now it's, it's not a bad sled out in the world is it but certainly uh, it's about cost and also about maintenance but um, apparently there is a triumph and royal enfield dealership or an independent on the island that will fix both of those 
ironically <laughs> there's a guy that owns Harley Davidson's out here that you could hire a Harley and ride around good luck with that oh Jesus I can't imagine putting having ridden Harleys I had 13 years on the beasts and um, oh, trying to get a super glide around these roads good luck with that that'd be a challenge and a half I'll tell you one thing you would have if you try to get a fat boy around with these bends you'd have really sharp razor sharp foot plates yeah and you'd be plenty of sparks coming off that'd be fun. but uh, yeah these ain't these ain't the roads for a Harley Davidson There's, I think that's more of a, a glamour thing anyway what do I know about motorcycling so I just feel like <laughs> The old dog chasing a motorbike. Wouldn't know what to do it. Wouldn't know what to do if he caught us. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Do you want do you want your dog run over? Yeah, there's a lot of gravel as we go around this one, so come a bit closer. What's the name of this place, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean this particular beach, has it got a name? Uh, I would like to say Surfer's Paradise, but I've... Well, no, I don't think that's... Uh, no, I think that's a bit dangerous, that. Uh, so you can see... Probably been shown quite a lot on YouTube this particular place, but um, wow, that's quite spectacular. Those waves, Atlantic rollers, without a doubt. And then goes into a bay, so it's quite, um, yeah, quite uh, spectacular here. Yeah. Also, that cliff top. Hard to get the perspective, but when you're standing here looking at this, the way that sea's coming in. Yeah, quite impressive. Let's walk. It's quite cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool though. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Good. Don't drop your camera. What a great first ride out. As you've seen from the video, the roads here are at times challenging, but lots of fun. We were treated to some great sights and views, and Steve has been a brilliant guide. We're looking forward to day two on the bikes and more vistas, more winding roads. I hope you've enjoyed episode two. If you have, give me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. Episode three is on the way. Speak to you soon.